Hello everybody, welcome back. Today is a book for art lovers. It is The Dream Colony, the autobiography of curator Walter Hopps. Um, now this book, I'll tell you now, it is very much for the hardcore art lover like myself. It is a memoir, it's a piece of non-fiction. If you're not mega crazy about the art world, this book is not for you because it probably wouldn't give you much that you were particularly interested in. However, being that I am an arts and culture writer, I was thrilled to get this book on Walter Hopps. If you don't know who Walter Hopps was, he was, he died in 2005, but he was a hugely innovative and influential curator in post-war American art. He lived out on the West Coast and he opened his first art gallery at 21. 21 and in that time in his early years he was pivotal in um, setting up the uh, awareness of artists such as Keinholz. He was the first curator to ever exhibit Andy Warhol's Campbell's soup cans and even some of his early exhibitions one of them was uh, shut down by the LA Vice Squad. He was an iconoclastic curator of contemporary art and he was so influential in getting the likes of Rauschenberg accepted in wider American cultural discourse. And he also became the first curator of museum exhibitions of Duchamp, Joseph Cornell, who I love, and uh, pop art, he, he set up the first museum exhibition of pop art. So when it comes to American art in the, in the modern post-war era, contemporary art, he was the man. He was also known as a real eccentric, so he was always late. His museum staff used to wear badges such as, um, Walter Hopps will be here in an hour because, or Hopps as he was just known, um, because he was always late and they were tired of answering questions. He was also quite an eccentric. He was very much like a Hunter S. Thompson, so he was completely addicted to alcohol, drugs, and he would often have blackouts and desperately trying to get his his own drug addled artist to come to their own exhibitions it was a bit like the blind needing the blind but it also made him very unreliable so it was famously said that he could never even finish an essay for an exhibition catalogue so there are good and bad points to that one an amazing character i would love to hear more about him two how are you going to get an autobiography from this guy? And indeed, the clues to the problems for this book are actually on the front cover because it says with Deborah Tresman. Walter Hopps was trying to work on this memoir for all of the latter years of his life, but he just couldn't finish it, wasn't really interested, his mind was never focused. So he did a series of interviews with Deborah, who then went on to finish this great piece of nonfiction after he died. The problem is, is that Deborah is trying to fill in a lot of gaps here because it's quite clear where Walter's interest lies. The books, the parts of this book where it's alive are when Walter is talking about art, when he's talking about his times with Duchamp, when he's talking about the eccentricity of Warhol, when he's talking about how Cornell and Rauschenberg's work made him feel, how he sort of ended up sort of crossing swords a bit with Dali. The, he is actually alive when he's talking about how he curated art for the various fairs, this is when he comes alive, when he talks about painting, when he talks about the art itself, he is alive. The problem is the context around all of that is quite dry and great passages of this book are actually really hard to plough through. Walter was married at least three times, um, I say at least because you never know, is there's barely a mention of his wives, they come and go and you get the feeling not only is Walter not interested in them, hence why they're barely in the book and obviously the wives are just given up and thought sod this we're out of here, is even Deborah can't bring much flesh to the bone there. There's not much here um, really about who he is as a person, about what turns him on, what things were frustrating for him, how he might have struggled in life. Indeed, the only clue to that is how this book comes alive when he talks about Cornell's collages or Rauschenberg's assemblages. Um, there are some great little anecdotes in there, but the first half of this book, as it tries to set the scene, is really dry and you really have to stick with it. I did find that quite hard to stick to 
but I was so keen to learn more about Walter because he was such an eccentric and pioneering curator and he clearly had such passion that there was enough for me in the little anecdotes and tidbits for me to hang on to. And also because frankly, I want to get inside Cornell's head is I'm so fascinated by his boxes and just the weirdness of it that I wanted to learn more. And of course you want to hear the little gossips of how Walter, when he was out of his head on drugs, uh, was trying to get his own artist who was um, out of his head on alcohol, trying to get him to an exhibition and they ended up driving 10 blocks across everyone's front yard rather than on the road because they couldn't work out where the road is. That bit is funny. Of course it's funny, but you have to get a, go through a lot to get there. However, I wanted to read this, so I'm glad that I did because he is such a unique character, Walter Hopps, and I wish we had curators like him today and I wish we could find and give curators the uh, space to be innovative and eccentric and really bold and we don't get much of that these days so he was a real character like I said he started so young what I would give to open my gallery at 21 so I enjoyed the dream colony but like I said it is very much for art lovers and you'll have to wade through a lot of the dry bits but if you're prepared to do it there's enough here that really fills the heart if you're the kind of person like me who gets a lot of um who gets a lot from paintings and from artwork, particularly, particularly contemporary artists. This is The Dream Colony by Walter Hobbs.